Now, due to the weather outside, I will not be able to do martial arts, so welcome to Conflict Havoc number two. This is my third and final video for Native American Indigenous History Month. So, I would love to do more martial arts in this video, but I'm not going to. Um, the only Native American martial artist that I can recall at this moment was Jamie Webster from the WMAC Masters. Now, I want to talk Native American history, and I'm going to put my keys and stuff back in my pocket because the dog hurt me, so my hip that I just did that kick with hurts like shit because I got slammed into a door. Anyway, all right, so first and foremost, here's something that I didn't know or I didn't remember until my Korean friend pointed it out to me one day when I was sitting in college working out. So I was whirling, 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 whirling this uh, bow staff. And what had happened was, there was a rumor of Asians going around beating up false martial artists. Now, if you weren't in the martial arts between um, 99, 97, 96, 97, 99, almost 2000, there have been rumors. I don't know how much of it was true because I heard the rumors too. But there was rumors that there were Asian dudes going around fucking up martial artists who were not Asian. Alright? So I'm training with my bow staff and this is what I'm expecting. Yeah, I'm expecting this fella who was Asian. He's Korean. Son of a preacher. How you doing, brother? Last name Kim. So I'm working my bow staff and I'm, I'm having at it. You know, I'm busting my ass with this thing. And he popped out of the blue. Now there's a basketball court at PVCC where I was training at. At first, it was just an open field. It was a hill, but it was an open field. And if you train against gravity, it teaches you how to fight and how to have the downhill advantage versus the uphill advantage or the high ground. The high ground does not always work like Star Wars, people. I will give you guys a martial art video after this with my bow staff and whatnot. Anyway, the... Uh, I popped up and I just swung my sword around, excuse me, my bow staff. And I was working and he popped up and I was like, aw shit. So I'm thinking, alright, this Asian dude's gonna fuck me up because he's Asian and he sees me doing kung fu in the room on the streets was that there were some Asians going around in Charlottesville beating up guys who thought they knew martial arts or who weren't Asian who thought they knew martial arts. I'm the only one who actually remembers these rumors. But as a martial artist, you kind of got to be aware of shit like that that's going on. So I was like, look, dude, I don't want no trouble. It's like, no, 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 I'm not here for that. It's like, okay, cool. It's like, I just want to see who you were. I was like, oh, well, I'm just James, just doing martial arts. It's like, yeah, I can see that. It's like, you're not bad with that bow staff. I was like, oh, this isn't even my weapon of choice. You know, it's just, a, it's the only way I can bring off school grounds with no one saying anything. You know, um, so working out. And him and I are talking, he's like, um, can I ask you a question? I'm like, sure, why not? You know, I'm, I'm the one with the weapon, so of course you can ask me a question. I'm not worried. And he goes, what do you mix with? It's like, Tch. like I haven't had that question given to me like a thousand times before in my life. So I told him, like, no, I'm, I'm part black, part white, part Native American. He's like, Hmm. Thought you were Chinese. And he was wearing glasses, so I was like, uh-huh. Um you probably should take those glasses off, buddy. And he's like, nah, um from all the way over there where he was at, you like you were part Chinese. He's like, Yeah, I don't see how you see that, but okay. And then I thought about it, I was like, oh, you thought I was part Chinese because you were way over there and I was doing martial arts. He's like, no, my glasses and I looked at your face from way over there had nothing to do with you doing martial arts. I thought you were Chinese and black like Tiger Woods. So he came up to me, you know, I'm like we were good friends after that because we wound up being in the same class. Like right after I put my stick up, we had to go to class and we had to go to public speaking and I beat him to class. And after that class, we got to talk. He's like, you know, um, Native Americans are Asian, right? And I laughed in his face. And I said, no, we're not. We're 
you're from Atlantis, dude. <laughs> oh, God. I was looking some kind of stupid after that. It's like, who told you you guys were from Atlantis? I said, no, I've always believed that we were from Atlantis. And he said, um, I don't think so. You might want to um, reevaluate that shit. And I'm like, the fuck you talking about? The Native Americans are from fucking Atlantis. You know, we were on this land first. Atlantis sunk, and this was the closest place that we could swim to. I don't know why that was even in my head, like, remotely. But that shit was in my head that Atlantis sunk, and we swam to America. All right, yeah, you can tell I honestly was a stupid son bitch. Now, what had happened was, somewhere between fifth grade and learning that I was part Native American with Miss Conrad, I forgot all of Native American history. I forgot how they crossed the Bering Strait land bridge after going from Mongolia through Russia. It wasn't Mongolia at the time, it was Greater Asia. And it wasn't really Russia at the time. It was more like the ass in the Siberia. Hit the Bering Straits. And then got over into America and splintered off into all the different tribes from um, Alaska to the First Nations to America to South America. So if you are of Native American descent, you're biologically Asian. All right? Which, again, somehow I magically forgot that shit. I literally... Magically forgot that shit. And me and him were arguing back and forth after class. And I was like, man, we ain't no bloody Asians. We're the, we're fucking from Atlantis. He's like, I tell you what. You got something to do today? I was like, nope. He's like, good. Let's go to the library. So glad I didn't put any money on this shit. Because I would have been one broke motherfucker. So, <laughs> we get in the library. We get all the Native American history books we can find which included like four or five different encyclopedias and some other books and even atlases and shit that actually tracked Native American migration. Man, I felt like a fool. I read that shit in every damn book that Native Americans came out of Asia. And my world shocked. And everything just stopped. It's like I got the cultural slap in the face that I needed. And it's like, so, what's that thing about Atlantis? I said, don't rub it in, man. I I'm, I'm still processing then I got to thinking back, and I was like, well, that explains a fucking lot. I said, that explains why I'm genetically good with martial arts. That explains why my great-grandmother did not have tannish skin, like my tan skin, because my great-grandmother Ada was pale for a Native American. But also, Native Americans, depending on your environment, your skin tone changes. Which is another thing that a lot of people don't know. Like if you were on the East Coast, you had pretty light skin depending on what part of the East Coast you're on. If you're like on the East Coast from Virginia up towards Manhattan, you were pretty light. Where if you went from like North Carolina down to South Carolina down to Florida, Native Americans' tones were more like my own. They're more coppery because they had more exposure to the sun and closer to the equator and all the other shit that I can't really scientifically explain. Which is why tribal people have different skin tones. So the further out west you go, the tanner Native Americans get. Alright? Now, this also could be said the same thing about like certain classes of Asians, real, like Chinese, Japanese, and Polynesians. Because Polynesians are more islanders, but they're still Asians. So Samoans and all of them are like my skin tone. Which also explains why people kept mistaking me for fucking Samoans or Polynesians. It also explained why my Spanish teacher, who was teaching me Spanish, said that I was a Mexican. Alright, but Mexicans are Native Americans too. Biologically, Mexicans are also biologically Asian. Alright, so when you go looking at tribal people and the tribal people have Asian features or Asiatic features and you're like, okay, um... Me being mixed is why I don't look for blood at all. And as I've been through some racist shit with some Native Americans, I don't look pure blood because I'm not pure blood, as they like to call that term. Those, not all Native Americans, but those two racist individuals in that tribe that um, came here to play wheelchair basketball, they wouldn't let me date the ranking, do ranking chief's daughter or whatever she was. She was very beautiful, by the way. But um, because I'm not pure blood, I wasn't um, liked 
by them and they kept telling me I need to stay away from her. And had they not been in wheelchairs, I probably would have broke their legs. But anyway, there's no honor in fighting a man who can't stand up and fight back. So, again, that would explain why my genetic disposition for handling martial arts was so well adapted because I was like, well, damn, I handled this bow staff and these martial arts weapons pretty well for a guy who's not Chinese. <laughs> Which, again, my friend, Mr. Kim, kept picking on me about this. Like, you know, and then whenever we go back to class for public speaking or whatever, we'd have a blast talking about Native American heritage and how much more he knew than I knew and how my world went from way up here to... Now, a funny story is that, you know, up until the fifth grade, I never knew I was part of Native American. I just thought I was part of black and part of white. And my mom looks white, so I was ashamed to have her come anywhere near school because I didn't want the kids to keep teasing me about how much I have a white mom. So then, you know, if my grandmother comes to school, she looks more Native American than my mom. So that wasn't too bad. But my grandmother never really came to school. If my Aunt Gladys came to school, because my Aunt Gladys has my same, same skin tone, so that was great, too. Now, as far as my girls and them siblings, they lived in another city, so that wasn't even going to happen. That wasn't remotely a choice of them coming all the way from Smithfield to Charlottesville to come to my school. Now, my aunt came one time when I did break dancing, and I think she might have came the other time when I was actually Tiny Tim. And the only reason why I got the part because I was the tiniest kid in the classroom, and they thought it would be cool to scaffold my ass on George Hawkins' shoulder so that I could be carried around and say, Merry Christmas to everyone. And God bless us all and good night. Whatever the fuck the line is. I don't remember. I was like nine or whatever the hell it was. But anyway, so Mr. Kim and I had probably the best time ever as he continued to pick on me about me not knowing my heritage and laughing about Native Americans not being from Atlantis and then proving that we were the nomads of Asia, which really hurt my feelings. It's like all this damn time, here I was thinking... You know, we were special because we got shape-shifting legends and Bigfoot and Coyote the Trickster and, psh, well, hell, we just the dogs of Asia. We decided that we didn't want to stay there anymore, and I don't know if we chased mammoth or buffalo or whatever, but somehow or another, a group of fucking damn Asians decided to go up through... Siberia and cross over into America and then splinter off into all these different thousands of tribes. Now, fun fact, some of the Native Americans not only split off and went all over Americas and down to South America, but they also went to Iceland, they also went to Greenland, they went up to the North Pole, they wound up going all the way back around, sinking back down into Upper Siberia and Russia. So when you see Native Americans from those areas, they'll be extremely light and pale. When it gets cold outside, this is the part where I say I wish that my grandmother was part Eskimo instead of part Cherokee, or instead of all Cherokee if you want to go on my father's side of the fence. And I was like, man, I don't handle cold very well. I don't know how Native Americans fucking survive winters in Virginia, but apparently they did because I'm here. But to end that, I just want you guys to understand that Native American history is very important. And that we don't teach enough of it in schools. We really don't. So you guys can do your own research. I had to do mine. God knows I had to do mine. And some of the things are still possibly in question. Alright, however, the one thing that's definitely possibly in question is, why did we leave? That is the most positive thing in question, is why did we leave? And why did we settle the Americas? 20,000 years before any European or any other person of any other color stepped foot there. And then the funny thing about that is that one of the first people to discover America before Columbus was a Chinaman. I do not remember his name. So, all in all, when you talk about Native Americans, you know, they were all over the place. You know, and Settled in America only to lose America to everyone else. So this is Comfort Havoc number two. I'll be back with my bamboo bow staff, B, C, and U. Thanks for watching.